This show is brought to you by Imperial Yeast. You hear us gushing over Imperial Yeast all the time, and that's because their yeast performs for us in every batch we brew. Imperial Yeast is adored by commercial breweries and home brewers alike. Their Pitchrite pouches are jam-packed with 200 billion fresh yeast cells guaranteed to deliver flawless, fast fermentations every time. Imperial Yeast strains are grown by a team of pro brewers and home brewers in Portland, Oregon, who live to help brewers learn more and ferment better. Join our recipe receiving Patreon groups and get a free upgrade to premium Imperial Yeast with every recipe kit that ships out to you. Learn more at patreon.com forward slash homebrew happy hour and come brew with us. Entertaining, Entertaining shows with content that spreads information and sparks discourse throughout the community. This is the Pearl Media Network. Hello and welcome to the Homebrew Happy Hour. This is the show where we supply the answers to your homebrewing questions and discuss all things related to craft beer. If you have a question you would like us to discuss on a future episode, go to homebrewhappyhour.com and click on the submit a question link at the top of the page. Or now you can call or text them in by using 325-305-6107. I am your host, Joshua Steubing. Today I am joined by the director of operations at cmbecker.com, Mr. James Carlson, over there and reversing it for some reason on Zoom. Down below us, there he is. Well, what a face on him. The president and chief keg washer of kegconnection.com, the falling asleep, not dancing bear, Mr. <laughs> Todd Burns. Gentlemen, how are y'all doing today? Good. Good. <laughs> Good. Todd, what was that look for? Like, <laughs> like, you always look so angry at me. I don't understand it. Not just on the podcast, though, right? No, no kidding. Uh, okay. Um, a couple things. Uh, here's here's how goofy I am. We are recording. Uh, my my usual workstation's dead, and uh, the motherboard is coming in on Monday. I'm gonna get it swapped out. So we're recording from the new workstation. This happens to be the, be the machine we did our presentation on, which we'll get to here in a little bit. But um, at the beginning there, when I was saying the number. I was doing this at the bottom of the screen like I usually do. I don't have that bumper to go there. So now I'm just going to look like an idiot because I don't have that bumper when I publish this video. People are like, what is he doing with his hands? Um, I, I'm going to have to get this machine all up to date to be probably our new primary machine. But James, you were saying it seems more smooth on your end. So yeah, maybe, it looks better. So maybe it's a good thing no. if, if we do it from here. Um Thank you all for joining us for this episode of Homebrew Happy Hour. We are back uh, at our usual schedule. Last week, we didn't do an episode because we were busy all week long getting ready for the 2020 Homebrew Con, which happened to be, it wasn't canceled. It was just moved online and became an online event. Right, Todd? Uh, We had a good time. (laughs) Yes, Homebrew Con was canceled. (laughs) <laughs> and then they came out with a new thing that was called Homebrew Con Online. I uh, smell a bet in there somewhere. I, I'm pretty sure I attended and presented at Homebrew Con 2020, but you know. No, no, you uh, went, were in Homebrew Con Online 2020, which is the first year they've ever had that. I, I think we're going to, I think it's just be, you know, arguing semantics. Uh, I'm willing to call it a draw if you are, Todd. Yeah, I was going to say, y'all could just hand each other $5. And I don't know. Go. We've been arguing about it for a month now. And I'm every time I get the, any kind of uh, uh, chance to mention that it's HomebrewCon online and the original <laughs> event was canceled, I've been doing that. So. Oh, and, he, and when it comes up, Kenny as well brings it up because I had a $5 bet with him. And he's like, oh, uh-huh. ju- just Venmo me the money. I'm like, no. I'm not letting this go, which real quick, let's segue into brew days and stuff like that. We kegged that beer, Kenny, finally, the Hop Red Rye IPA. We like to call it Kenny's. (laughs) We do. Hop Hop Red Rye. All right. Two things real quick. One, it is not uh, a red IPA. That's not what it turned out to be. But two, it's not the worst thing I've ever had, but it's... (laughs) (laughs) No, my rye was the worst thing. No, I don't know, man. There's been your scorched rye still is better than <laughs> scorched earth rye. It, it's still better than some of the, the scorched sour. earth rye. There's like been some that. sour beers I've had, like uh, like the, what about that cherry one y'all had? Or no, it was just a cherry wheat beer, right? From San Adam, Sam Adams. Y'all oh had? yeah. Ugh. No, it's like cough medicine. But That's what it tastes like. The Hop Red I- I- IPA that we did, 
I I told Todd, so it's very boozy. I mean, the alcohol shoots up your nose. There's no denying it. <laughs> it's almost like a scotch ale, right, Todd? Yes. Yeah, it's strong. It's in my kegerator, and I think it'll be there a while. <laughs> you don't. Why aren't you dumping it? I don't understand why you haven't dumped it. Or because we're doing a tasting of it. Remember? I thought you were joking. I can't ever tell when you're serious, man. <laughs> There's a rule of thumb. If uh, if it somehow embarrasses or makes things uncomfortable for you, I'm not joking. Oh yeah. <laughs> okay, that's easy enough to follow. So hardly ever joking. I will say this though. Uh, my uh it, it has such a scotch ale type of taste to it i was telling todd what if we bottled these in bombers and sold them as like a, a limited reserve scotch ale i know there's some H austin hipsters that would pay big bucks for this because one little sip of it is all you need to convince <laughs> them that it's special yeah and it's so and it, and it cleared too it, that, that it, was shocking it is super clear isn't that crazy yeah. it was mm. mud water when it was in the <laughs> <Yeah>. fermenter <laughs> It, it blows my mind. But uh, besides that, I don't know of any brew days y'all have coming up. I took home the Spite Solo system for me and my dad to try out. And so I think I wanted to brew a Kolsch on it first. But Todd's like, if you don't want to pay for the recipe, you got to brew a recipe we could do on the show. <laughs> and well, so, dude, then pay for the recipe. I don't want to pay for want? the recipe. <laughs> 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 oh, oh! Then you have to follow my rules. I know that I'm just griping. It's what I do. So I'm gonna figure. We haven't. I still haven't brewed this month's Patreon recipes. Either one, an eight bit wit. Y'all have done a Bohemian Pilsner, so I wouldn't do that. I'd probably do the eight bit wit. Which uh, recipes for our Patreon members? I'll go ahead and segue to that. They have shipped out this week. If you don't have your tracking number, you can email me Joshua at homebrewhappyhour.com, and I can get that tracking for you. Um, or you know, you can just check your inbox. Sometimes check your spam. We've been having domain issues with emails going to spam from keg connections so check your spam first then email me all those went out as well as new members got their new uh todd do you have a shirt on you right now you can show the new patreon shirts oh look james those came out so good man yeah they came out so good marty over there at you name it in comanche texas did a wonderful job on our shirts um, it's simple. It, it feel, It's a good shirt. It that, fits good. That's Todd's favorite shirt material. Todd doesn't like the next level shirts I get because he's like, they're too skin tight. And I tell him, lose some weight. But now he's telling that to me <laughs> because I'm fat, Josh, again. But, <laughs> so maybe I'd like these new shirts better as I'm well. Gonna, I'm going to have one special made, one of those really special stretchy ones that you like and a medium for you <laughs> oh oh you're rude you're rude you know that's yeah, funny bright blue when jeff wilkin our buddy evil pug brewing sent us shirts i think he missed i train jujitsu all the time but i also have a terrible diet he sent me a medium todd i've never heard todd laugh louder in my life than when i tried on that shirt and i can you know what if i lose I'm 190 right now. I've lost about nine pounds of the 18 I gained in quarantine. If I get down to 170, that shirt will fit because it is a Nets level shirt. But right yeah. now, it looks I look pregnant. I look very pregnant. Um, it's terrible. I am not a medium. Just for, just a heads up for people. I'm not a medium, but like one month of the year, if I'm competing in jujitsu, and it's like really one weekend of the year, I'm a medium. But Anyway, so yes, uh, Patreon members uh, got their choice this month between an 8-Bit Wit or the Bohemian Pilsner. I don't remember the Imperial strains that Joe sent out with them, but like every month, because of our, our sponsors, Imperial Yeast, we are shipping all of our recipe kits for our Patreon members with free Imperial Yeast. Um, I'm very confident whichever strain you got, you're going to love because I have not had a strain of Imperial I've ever used that did not do incredible it there is fantastic yeah, sure. news, and we really appreciate their sponsorship um you can go to patreon.com forward slash homebrew happy hour for more information and join our community let's see what else i've got going on i already talked about the spite solo brew day with my pop are y'all brewing anything coming up or what, what's y'all's brew plans i may bruce uh may bruce saturday i haven't uh haven't 100 decided uh, we've got some other things going on but i might i might try to brew on saturday James, anything I, for you? I, I'm kind of thinking about possibly brewing a crispy lager. Mm. Mm. How long? How I long like are you gonna have to idea. lager it for? Because I want a crispy lager right now. Is that a recipe? <laughs> what is that recipe? Is that on it's, our? Uh, it's kind of a new thing popping up on Reddit. So, oh yeah, we ought to develop know, a recipe it's, and it's launch a corn. One on the site. And, yeah, it's like two row and some corn. 
and uh, it's supposed to be real crispy and, and clean and dry and it's kind of the new thing right now. So what? I thought we might try that. What is your Reddit username so people can go follow you and stop trolling me? What is your... <laughs> <laughs> I'll are have you, to look it up because I don't ever remember. I forget. You are super active on Reddit. And I remember one time I threw you under the bus. Oh, yeah. TX underscore gearhead. Perfect. I threw you under the bus about technology one time. Do you remember that in a homebrew thread? Oh, yeah. I had fun with yeah, that. Yeah. And you replied. And I was like, holy hell, they're here. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I knew, though. I, I now I'm I know. the silent troll. <laughs> now I can just throw Todd under the bus because Todd doesn't know even how to spell Reddit, much less what it is. So what is, I, What's Reddit? What are you talking it, about? Exactly. <laughs> So it's w- like the first place to get news is what yeah, they Yeah, it's a wonderful site, but and they're good people. I like the more I uh whine about Reddit, the more people on Reddit troll me. It's a beautiful <laughs> symbiotic kind of relationship we need each other. If I didn't whine, they'd have nothing to troll. If they didn't troll, I'd have nothing to whine. So, but yeah. re- it it is fun, but yeah, y'all should go follow James and I'm assuming the Reddit's you subscribe to. When you said crispy, I couldn't help but say crispy boy in my head, B O I. Yeah, he's on there too. Yeah, <laughs> may, may, maybe maybe we'll just go ahead and name your recipe crispy boy. Summer of no, crispy boy. He may boy. not like that. Yeah, he may not. <laughs> But yes, Todd, it is right now. I, I want a crispy lager right now. I don't yeah. know how quick you can I turn think one that around. Could be, that could evolve into something that, especially this time of year, would sell real well. But we've got to get going on the recipe uh, and testing. But you, uh, I didn't think you really cared for recipes with corn in them. Uh, that will well, be the second one in a row you've brewed. It now. will. And I'll tell you what, the biggest difference, you know, we brewed that recipe of Lorena's. And we followed it to the letter. And then Joe brewed the same thing, basically, but didn't do the rice. And uh, you can you can taste the difference. The biggest difference that I can tell is the rice gives me a headache. Um, so I like that. I like the flavor and the lightness of it. But with the rice in there, it, it, it really gives me a splitting headache. And and that's happened. And now and I'm talking about getting hammered drunk. I'm talking if I have two or three, it'll give me a headache. And you know what's funny, and I might be using that word wrong. Your the recipe you brewed, funny ha ha or funny weird, f- funny weird. <laughs> and I, 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 well, you know what? Words don't mean anything anymore. Funny, whatever you want it to mean. Um, that not that there's anything wrong. With not that there's anything wrong with that. <laughs> that uh, yes, that cream ale that you brewed off from Lorena's recipe. I actually, that's the first beer you could taste the rice, and I like yeah. it. It's very pleasant. Oh, actually. I like that flavor. I do. It just get for some reason I'm weird like that. Like Budweiser will give me a headache if I yeah. drink it. I was going to ask if it's gluten, but it's not because I know how you consume. I mean, we all consume enough alcohol to know if we had a gluten intolerance. It can't yeah. be that. Uh, that's it's got to be the starches in the rice that cause that. Yeah, it's got to be. But yes, but that is a great thing to remind people that that recipe on Homebrew Supply and Cat Connection. Uh, which Bob Toots cream ale, phenom- mm-hmm. it turned out phenomenal. What and what was it? Yeah, tr- easy to drink too. Really easy. And to drink. and from grain to glass, isn't it fairly quick to turn around? Or or yeah, we did that one, Todd. What and Joe kegged his in two weeks, and I think I kegged mine the week after that. So you can literally be drinking that in two to three weeks. That's what I need. And maybe I'll brew. I need to brew something. You know, we're, we have a beach trip at the end of July, which funny enough, James and I are going to be at the same beach at the same time. <laughs> not planned. Yeah, not yet. Hopefully we'll keep our fingers crossed because there's there's quarantine talk again. Oh, I'm sneaking in. I don't care. Nothing's yeah. keeping me from the beach. But what I'm thinking about doing, James, is taking a keg of something. You have to oh, come. Yeah. You have to come to the beach house and help me drink it with my oh, pot. Definitely. My dad. Yeah, with, my, I've got that cooler set up. That's got the dispense. I've got the. Exactly. Exactly. The vent faucet with the little nitrogen cartridges. It my, works good. My dad would love to have you come over, play some. Oh, that'd be neat. Play, yeah. play well, some now, now, you, He mentioned that you were a little vague about coming over before when he brought it up. <laughs> you were like, eh, yeah, I might come over to see you when I'm not when yeah. I'm on vacation. When, when uh, I first when I first invited you at the barn, <laughs> it, yeah, I was like, James, come over. You're like, sure. We'll see. Oh no. <laughs> See, I thought you always go to South Padre, right? We usually do. We usually do. This year's but Port A. I'm like, no, nah, I'm not driving all that way to South Padre to see you. That, That's what I was thinking in my head. That makes when much more sense. That, like, Duh. that makes much more sense. But you're going to uh, Port Aransas, right? We are. We are this year. Okay. That's where yeah. we'll be. Definitely. Yeah. Absolutely. You have to come check we'll out. We'll keep each other posted. F- yeah. Maybe we can all get together and eat or something. We would love Maybe that. Maybe I'll just drive up there and see you all. <laughs> <on there. laughs> 
hey, go. you can come stay. What if we uh, did the plenty of space either way? What if we did the podcast from the beach? Yeah, uh, we could. I'm in. I'm in. I'll be there. I, there I can't wait to tell everybody. Oh, I gotta go. We gotta do the podcast. Yeah, I gotta do the podcast. Sorry. All right, let me get us into the show's content, starting with our recap of Homebrew Con. It's not gonna be long. We do have questions on today's show, but I did want to mention you could go to homebrewhappyhour.com forward slash homebrew con and watch our entire presentation as well as uh, i went above and beyond the call of duty todd i made a pick list of everything we went through in the whole presentation including that video part where you were showing how to build a teaser every from the teaser itself to everything you used in that build so if someone was wanting to make a one-for-one recreation of your build they could do it just off of those links everything's in stock right now most of it's in stock the 10 pound cylinder the 10 pound co2 is not in stock right now but they're easy you can find them uh yeah, well, the five, most people are probably going to use a five anyway so right that's fine. but they're easier to fill too but what are y'all's thoughts we for the first day we were all together we watched basically everything on homebrew con from your barn um uh, Day one recap, I would have to say, went way better than I than I was worried it might go. Just as with the internet, there's so many variables. I mean, I was really concerned about us. James and Todd, y'all came through last minute to make sure our internet issues got solved. <laughs> that was such no. a we were we were having like 40, 40, 40 download, 40 upload speeds. And then the day before, what were they like two or 20 down, but like two and a half up, which is what we needed for our presentation. Oh, it was as bad as 10 down and three up. It got really bad. But again, y'all, y'all strong armed that communications company. And they they came through Total Telecom in the I guess they served the Brown County area. Uh, yeah, fan- Brown County and Comanche County and, fan- and, e- and Erath County. Fantastic company. I know that applies to like point zero 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 one percent of our audience, but I have to shout them out because they came through. They they went above and beyond and they did. And, and did. And I hope you know you told me too. Well, that- the guy ran a cable from my house to the barn <laughs> because the microwave they couldn't get the microwave in time. It's like. It was so funny because it's you can go 300 feet and he's like, "Damn it, I'm at 299 feet and we're we can't quite reach the barn." So James puts a switch on and then we take another cable from there. Fifty oh, foot talk more. about rigging. Oh, oh it, it was, was it was it was, yeah. it was funny. We can laugh at it now because it's done, but I'm I'm thankful for them because it allowed us to have a very smooth presentation. I like the feedback we got. I don't know if y'all went back through the comments through the live chat. Um, it was very well received. I appreciate everyone who is new to our show now who just started watching us because you saw us at HomebrewCon. Thank you for the kind words and the feedback. We we put a lot of work into that presentation, and, and I hope it came through that way. Uh, every other presentation too went very well. Like people, a lot of good information w- was shared, and I'm I'm curious if you guys think future homebrew cons they've got a live sh- even if they're in person they'll probably start live streaming to some capacity, don't y'all think? Yeah, I was surprised as well as both of y'all were how many people were in the the participating. I know at one time I saw almost thirteen hundred people. Yep. It was cra- It was crazy how many people were there live and the and keeping up. That's why I'm glad we had uh, Laddick, uh, Joe, in our chat, being able to help people who couldn't get their questions into the question section because I couldn't nope. keep up with. Every time I looked at the chat, it was something about butt clamps. <laughs> 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 <It> was, <laughs> I'll just leave it at that. Y'all got to watch the presentation. Did you find a link to, for people to be able to buy the butt clamps? Uh, I now remember <laughs> they said no. absolutely don't Google it. I don't know, but Josh said he linked every single product, and I just was Let's curious what his link was for butt clamps. Well, after that Google search, I now have a crippling addiction, and um, <laughs> I, I really I, I don't use this. What, what are they called again, uh, James? <laughs> butt connectors. Know. They're butt, butt connectors. connectors. Yeah. That's probably connectors. Google worse. Yeah, too. if you Google uh, that, it might be bad okay. too. You never know. We have a video coming out very soon where Todd shows how to transfer from the secondary to bottle or from secondary to keg and he made sure to get bunghole into that presentation and and he said it with such a straight face when we were done recording when we were done i didn't know if he meant to do it and i didn't stop him and when we were done recording he goes did you notice what i said (laughs) yeah because i was holding a bung and i said now you just take the uh bubbler and you put it in the bung hole (laughs) 
I mean, yeah, it's funny, right? Oh, we're yeah. all, oh, we're all third, at some point, we're all third graders. Right? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Anyway, so yes, Homebrew Con, to, to make a long story short, which, as Todd would say, is too late, I think the online went very smooth. Kudos to the AHA, everyone who presented. Our friend Lorena, since we brought her up, she had to get hers canceled because of technical difficulties, but they recorded it today, and you can go to homebrewcon.org, go to sessions, and watch hers on uh, brewing wine and mead with equipment that you already have it was something i was looking forward to not only because we love lorena to death she's an awesome person but Mm -hmm. uh she's a wealth of knowledge and i we have a question at the the last question of today's show talks about like non-beer brewing and what we do and um i think that that talk would have helped me a lot because the only non-beer brewing i do is kombucha and again we'll get to that but being able to use your same equipment for a variety of beverages is what makes this hobby very uh, fun, enjoyable, and future-proof. Because some people get into brewing beer, and then they find themselves only wanting to brew wine, and they don't have to buy a whole lot of other stuff. They have the equipment from their beer brewing. So that go to homebrewcon.org, look at all the sessions. For ours, you can go to homebrewhappyhour.com forward slash homebrewcon and get it all there. All right, guys, I have three questions for today's show. The first question comes from our friend Jordan, who uses the submission form at homebrewhappyhour.com. Jordan wrote, Kolsch! Now that Joshua is paying attention, I have a question about my keg. It is a Cornelius keg with ball lock posts on it. I am fairly new to kegs, and I accidentally put my gas connection on the liquid post, and it is stuck. I mean, really stuck. I feel like I am going to break the disconnect if I pull too hard. What do you suggest I do, and is that a common thing to happen, or am I the only idiot who puts disconnects on the wrong post? Your podcast is great, and I hope you can help. Jordan, um... I'll take it first real quick. You are not alone. I've done this way too frequently. And I oh, know it's, yeah. it, it is a terrible thing. <laughs> Todd, you're the keg man. What, what do you have to say? Because I know you've got this question. I've got a, I've got a I, question. I, I, I don't know. I've never done it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. James, go ahead. Okay. I'm my, not first, yeah. my first question would be to ask the guy, what kind of disconnect do you have? That is actually, and James isn't being snobby when he says that. He's nope. being serious because a huge, remember a, there's a retail brand out there. I won't name names because I don't want to shame them, but they, without telling customers, switched from CM Becker at one point in their career years ago mm-hmm. to the cheap Chinese knockoffs and people were replying back like, what the hell? Like these disconnects, well, first off, they're not marked with CMB on it. And, but no. they're they're leaking and they're sticking. I accidentally put it on. I put my liquid on the gas and I can't get it off. Uh, so no. you're right, James. That is a good that is a good point to bring up. But Todd, what what do you have to say to him? Uh, I've never. I mean, I've done it a lot of times. I've done it in the last three days, um, and I've always just been able to pull it off. I mean, I might be, I might have to wiggle a little bit and pull it off. I will say this: if you have a CM Becker disconnect. And you can't get it off, and you break the disconnect. We'll replace it. We'll send charge. You know, you send us a photo and tell us about it. We'll replace it for you. I like that policy. Uh, it, it, it's going to save me a lot of awkward things showing y'all all the Sam Becker distance I've broken because I'm an idiot. Uh, no, I'm kidding. Yeah. I haven't actually broken any. But we have recently. My dad did do that on accident. He he moved the um the gas disconnect over to the liquid side on accident and and it you know it just took some muscle to pull up on the ball lock and which it it brings me to two points that i made to him one is that if you had a legitimate reason to put gas on your liquid side just switch the disconnect at the point of like i use swivel nut connections on my uh, lines and so if i'm trying to force carbonate down the gas post because that dip tube or pardon me if i'm trying to force terminate down the liquid post because that dip tube goes all the way to the bottom traditionally where the gas just goes a few inches in um just put your liquid disconnect on your swivel nut gas line that's a benefit of having mfl disconnects and swivel nuts and then connect it that way and boom you won't have any sticking issues because that disconnect's made for that post but i was also telling my dad this is my argument for pin lock posts all the time you can't do that on pinlock posts. You can't put them on the wrong post because the the pins physically won't let you connect. I've never heard of anyone, oh, I accidentally put my liquid on my gas because you can't the second you try, you're like, "Why well, want to go on?" Oh, whoops. Wrong, you know, wrong wrong pins, so you put it on the other side and snap it in place. What do you have to say about that, Todd? Uh, yeah, I th- I think you're right. Uh, but, you know, the, the only problem with pinlocks is that they you know, they were they flooded the market for a while. Everybody bought nothing but ball locks, 
And then pin locks came in and there was kind of a mixture. And then it was a lot of pin locks. And now we, we've kind of seen pin locks disappear again as the supply has gone down. And so it, it may be a little harder to get pin locks in the future. All the new kegs that are made are almost always ball lock. Uh, the, the easiest thing to do is to look on the side of the post and no matter what kind of keg you have somewhere, they're going to have a horizontal, uh, oh, wait a minute, vertical mm-hmm. line, horizontal line, horizontal line across the post, horizontal right? Line. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, horizontal line across the post. Uh, and that means it's gas. And the one that doesn't have a line on it is liquid. They're in a little bit different places, but once you get used to it, even if you can't see the in and out, which half the time I can't see if some of, some of the kegs have an in or an out or an in and an out. Some of them don't. Uh, it's, that's not a very good way to do it. The best way is to look for that, uh, uh, where it's, you know, scratched across there or has a line across there in the metal. And James, his, yep. you know, what is the worst case scenario for this, for, for our friend Jordan? Like if he, he, you know, I have to give him the benefit of the doubt. He's trying everything to pull it off. It, he's right. not going to break the post, right? Like the worst thing is he would no, break the No, no, that post is stainless steel. He's not going to hurt it. it if he the, breaks the post, yeah, we want to know about it. Yeah, I want we want pictures. this guy on our team. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> What's the yeah, worst Yeah, no, thing? I mean, uh, what, what I would do if I was him, I'd, I would try to pry up equally on both sides. Now, sometimes what you can do is you can find, like I would, I have thin wall wrenches and if you can find something that fits the post, but not the disconnect, and then you can put a piece of wood underneath it and gently pry it up to get it loose. But, or you can uh, try twisting and pulling, but if it's stuck really bad. Or um, jiggle it. I mean, uh, he's it. probably just not, he's probably nervous about pulling too hard. Do you want to yeah. break it? Pull too hard. If you're, you're not, I don't think you're going to break it by hand. No, I mean, it's it, they're pretty tough. They are. That's a actually a, a reinforced, a fiber reinforced polymer plastic, and it takes a lot to break it. If, Unless you have one of those other brands, <laughs> we're sorry, <laughs> but his, we'll be happy to sell you a CM Becker disconnect. So, Definitely, Todd. If his keg is already like pressurized and there's liquid in it, should he depressurize it? Would that help, or does that not matter? Um, no, it, it wouldn't. It wouldn't help to depressurize it, but. I can't imagine. Yeah, no, I don't. I don't think no. it matters. Okay. Yeah, I'll just. Yeah, that I didn't tank know. post it'll close before the disconnect is off enough to let liquid out. It'll shut off. So, yeah, just just pull on it, pry it up. Perfect. So, Jordan, yes, if it's a CM Becker one and and you destroy it, let us know. Todd, he, he you can quote him here. We will replace it for you. And uh, if it's not a Sam Becker, let us know so we can shame. Uh, and, and, and if you happen to break the post, let us know so we can recruit you for the end times uh, army that we're, you know, slowly accumulating as things are going down the drain. But anyway, yeah, uh, we'll have you as chief of security at the next homebrew con. Yeah, that's right. You'll be chief of security. That's right. You can uh, join in. It, it will take him five minutes to start making fun of me with the rest of you guys. So it, you'll have a good time. <laughs> Have a good time, Jordan. All right. Thank you for submitting your question. This is a great time to insert and remind you all that if we take your question on the show, we send you a $25 gift card to kegconnection.com. So question number two comes from our friend Gary, who also used the submission form at homebrewhappyhour.com. Gary wrote, gentlemen, I watched your presentation at HomebrewCon online and wanted to tell you how awesome it was. I learned a lot and the quality was top notch. I'm new to your show and I'm catching up on your early episodes now. I do have a question that you might have already taken, so maybe you could just point me to the appropriate episode. I've been bottling for years, but as I age, I want it to be simpler. If I begin to keg my beers, would it be possible to use a natural carbonation process inside of the keg, or am I forced, and he put quotation marks on it because I think he's being punny, am I forced to push CO2 from the tank to the keg? I'm no purist per se, but I think natural carbonation is my preferred method for now. What are your thoughts and have you ever naturally carbonated beer inside of a keg? Gary, um, I have never naturally carbonated ever until we just made that video, Todd, on bottling. That's the right. first time I've ever, you looked at me like I was an idiot because you're, <laughs> well, I mean, m- even more condescendingly. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay because yeah. Todd, he was making the priming sugar and stuff all together. And, and I was I was like, oh, what is that? He goes, 
what, what do you mean, what is that? <laughs> I said, Todd, I've never bottled. He goes, you bottle all the time. I said, no, from <laughs> from a carbonated keg with the beer gun, trademark here, I, I I do bottle with the beer gun. And that's the only way I'll bottle. And I'll, I won't lie, bottling the way we did the traditional in a bottling bucket, priming sugar, wasn't difficult, but it wasn't enjoyable. Um, I've never naturally carbonated in a keg. James, is it possible? Oh yeah, you just said it. You just said it. The the part the the sugar liquid. Normally, I would take when the, the times I did bottle it was with clay. We would take a little bit of uh, corn sugar and dissolve it, heat it, cool it down, and then gently add it to the bottling bucket and uh, do it that way. You, I don't know why you couldn't just do the same thing to the keg. Just make sure you don't oxygenate anything. Yeah, that's exactly um, how you would do it. Yeah. I and mean, then just close it up and let it set set room temp. Now, Todd- I, I have never in 15, uh, in the last uh, 14, 15 years while I've been kegging, I have never naturally carbonated a keg. I have to admit, I just, I, I, I want to drink the beer right then. I cool yeah. it down, I carbonate it, and I start drinking. So what the thought of waiting another two weeks is just, horrific thought to me so yeah. <laughs> yeah we're with those bottles that we did we're on like week three right now of waiting aren't we it's been a while uh we're we should be right at week two they're probably done i looked at it last night i, I should have probably put one in the fridge or just open one warm i guess and taste it but uh, i'm sure it's done it's got uh i see st- sediment on the bottom so when you w- w- when you do that and you naturally carbonate that's the other thing if you do it in a keg you know keep in mind you're going to be creating stuff that's going to fall to the bottom just like it does in the bottles. And when you pour that first beer, don't freak out and go, oh, my gosh, something's wrong with my beer. It looks like, uh, you know, it looks like uh, soup. Yeah. But uh, really, it, it's just going to be all that stuff that settles down from, from the yeast eating the, the last bit of that sugar. And probably within a beer or two, it'll be gone. And, and then you should have clear beer. Yeah, and another thing too that helps is cut about a half inch more off your dip tube so it's not down inside that trub. And if you want really super bright beer, you can always do a, a line to line transfer from one keg to another. You know, almost every beer you buy is force carbonated, like any beer you buy in the store, except every once in a while you'll see a beer that says bottle conditioned. But really, uh, everything that you pretty much drink is force carbonated. I, I have done it both ways and, and you know, you know what, there you go. Let's do this. How about this? Let's do a test. Let's, uh, when we do the taste test of that beer, cause we haven't done that one yet, right? No, we have not. We're going to do it when I come up next week. Okay. So when we do it, let's open a bottle and see if we can tell the difference during that. Because we have it kegged, force carbonated, and we have it bottle conditioned. We Let's do. See if That's we can right. Taste the difference. That, uh, That'd be that, fun. That'd be a good experiment. That would that would be a great experiment. Yeah, let we'll do that for the recipe recap. That because we yeah. don't we don't have a commercial grapefruit IPA, I don't believe, in your fridge right now. And I'm not I'm not no. sure of a popular grapefruit IPA I was gonna buy and bring. Or I say I was gonna buy. Total transparency. I was gonna make Todd buy and bring to the fridge. Now like, don't <laughs> feel like you can't buy some beers before you come and bring them for us to use. I brought all that Kolsch and, and I'm bringing more beer with me this time. I, I have some. Wait a minute. You brought three. Uh, I told you to bring a 12 pack and you brought me three. Oh, uh, well, that's to me. No, I will bring the rest of it when I come up next. The last time I brought beer, it was supposed to be for us to enjoy. And you send me pictures of your friends drinking all my beer and one beer. He and you send me beer. videos of your friends messing with our camera gear and dropping the battery. Eric, I saw that video. I saw that video of you <laughs> dropping it. That battery it, it, it's to still... be fair, to be fair, he had been drinking. <laughs> anyway, golly. Oh, Todd, Todd. Oh, that really pissed me off when I saw that. But we were at the barn and we were already a few beers in. So I yeah, am what are you gonna do? But um, I had to show it to you. I was gonna just hide it from you forever. I showed James and Mark and everybody else. I was like, I can't show that to Josh. Put two beers with me, and I had to show it to he you. He waited. No, you showed me two videos. <laughs> yes, you showed me one with him doing the beer, and then you started laughing. And I'm like, what? And he goes, look at this other one. <laughs> That's the one I finally showed Josh on Friday. The the one where he drops the battery. Yeah. 
Uh-huh. Josh didn't think it was funny, <laughs> but I've seen Josh do exactly the same thing. By no, way. I caught it. It fell off of that, and I caught it when that happened. I didn't drop it. You're, yeah, because you weren't drinking. It, you're, that is a good point. <laughs> that is a great point. Yeah. Oh, Josh. I was going to ask you all, because uh, I assumed because of efficiency and, and whatnot, that most commercial beers that you would enjoy, bottle, can, or draft, are forced carb, right? Like, that's just, yes. I don't believe yeah. there is a scientific, quantified way to measure a difference that would be noticeable or, or i mean right the carbonic acid is going to be present and i don't believe it is different based on the method of carbonation is that correct we'll know next week yeah well i would think that you know it's anytime co2 is dissolved into a liquid it's going to create that so you know it, there might be some subtle differences people some people swear by forced carbonation leaves a different taste than either set it and forget it or what we're talking about natural. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I have tried, obviously I've tried beers that are, that are bottle conditioned. And I just, like I said, I, I can't tell the difference, but some people yeah. may be able to, uh, some people have, to, you know, really yeah. maybe have a real high perception of that. I, I think, I don't do think. y'all hear that? That's the sound of people typing me hate mail to tell me we <laughs> are wrong. Um, no, but, anybody that thinks I can tell the difference is an idiot. What can I say? Oh no! Oh no! <laughs> and all right, if you now, disagree with that, if you disagree with that, I want you to let Josh know. Joshua okay. at homebrewhappyhour.com. Yeah. <laughs> Joshua at homebrewhappyhour.com. Oh, Gary, thank you so much for submitting your question. We've got one more for today's show, and it, it is a friendly conversation question. I love when we can do some of these every now and then. So, from our friend Julia, who also used the submission form at homebrewhappyhour.com, Julia wrote, "Hello, homebrew happy hour. I found your show on Stitcher, and I." love it lots of good advice and the chemistry between hosts and guests is noticeable i know your podcast is almost exclusively about beer but i'm i'm more into making wine and mead at home what are your favorite non-beer beverages to brew and what non-beer beverage would you like to try and make in the future julia um I think I'm the only one who actively makes non-beer beverages in this group aren't i i do i'm still doing kombucha very yeah. regularly and i i can't stress enough guys how uh easy making kombucha is how easy keeping a scoby hotel is and i it could be placebo i'm a fan of placebo if it works i've noticed a uh, better gut health for me which just means i poop better uh <laughs> And Lord knows I love pooping. So like it, the kombucha has made a difference. Now, it's, for me, it was an acquired taste because I don't do any flavoring. I'm lazy. We've established that throughout the 187 episodes of this show. But kombucha, I highly recommend if you want something to um, complement your brew day, you know, you could easily brew up some tea on, on if you're even if you're outside brewing or whatever, if you have a, a fire source or source of heat. You can, you can make it super quick and let it start fermenting. I usually turn around from brew day to drinking in about 10 days, seven to 10 days. It's very quick turnaround and it's very rewarding. And I'm going to scale up from my one gallon now to five gallon just because of how quick I'm going through it, which means funny enough, I'm probably going to have to make a kegerator around here. I'm going to buy an event faucet because I already have that fridge if, you know, that's storing the one gallon kombucha and I'll just use the party faucet. And then that way I can have short amount of tubing for the liquid and I can just dial it in and just and pour out my kombucha. Uh, Todd, you've talked about making mead almost as long as I've known you. I don't even know if you've actually made oh, yeah, it. I'm, I'm ready to make we- mead. I've, I've, I've been planning it out for the last 12 or 13 years and I'm, I think I'm ready to do it now. So, uh, I've made wine, uh, several times, uh, Wine's very easy to make if if you make it, you know, from a kit. Uh, it, obviously, if you go pick grapes and squeeze them out and with your feet and all that, it, I'm sure it's a lot more difficult. But, uh, you know, I, I've made wine. The wine that I made, I, it was actually really, really good. It, it wasn't difficult to make. Uh, you know, you're talking about be- making beverages. I mean, I love carbonated water, so I've done that. Uh, it flavored carbonated waters. Uh, that's uh, you know, I, I would like to make whiskey as well, but that's illegal in the United States. I certainly wouldn't do that. <laughs> yeah, and we'd never ship beer either, and we'd never solicit y'all to ship us beer at eighteen hundred EDC, EDC Parkway, Comanche, Texas seven six four four two. We would never 
asked you to ship us beer. And we'd never thank you on the show for those (laughs) who may have broken the law. But uh, James, (laughs) you're laughing over there. Have you? I actually, we've never had this talk with you. I know. Do you ever brew anything other? No. (laughs) (laughs) I brew coffee on the weekends. I brew coffee. (laughs) That's about it. (laughs) I forgot about coffee. Oh, James is a connoisseur. (laughs) So is Todd, right? You use Folgers, don't you, Todd? I I do not. (laughs) I'm a coffee snob, Todd. I have pounds of Folgers over there in my. I have Folgers Dark Silk. That's what I get. I like Folgers Dark Silk. It's good. It is good. (laughs) No, it's not bitter. It's bold, and it's five ninety nine on Amazon. Todd, recommend a coffee brand for us, then you snob. I mean, uh, there's there's so many different. I mean, just as long as it's a hundred percent Arabica. Arabica, Ar- 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 Arabica, uh, <laughs> then, uh, you know, there's, there's so many out there. I don't, I don't have a particular brand. I just try to buy good coffees, you know? Oh, so you just hate Folgers. It's not a, it's not about anything else. You just hate Folgers. Well, it's just a crappy, cheap coffee. You're it's an not, anti-Folgite. That's what I, you I, are. It's, I don't like, it's not just Folgers. <laughs> I don't like any of the coffee with those kinds of beans i just, it, it, that, I just don't like that what about community you ought to have community in the office community is a very is a very good coffee oh that, is that yeah. not a value brand because i love community as well is that no not? it's it's 100 percent. okay yeah. folgers what? is not my friend whatever not. So, <laughs> oh, you know what it, you know all this coffee talk we should we, we haven't brewed cold brew coffee it's been since oh, you yeah, started, that's James. another one. Pro cold brew coffee. We've done that. Oh, yeah, I've actually brewed cold brew coffee. There you go. James has brewed something. And, but, and, oh, but, I have a cousin that wants a SCOBY <laughs> that lives in Austin, by the way. Don't let me forget. Oh, so do I need to bring one with me? Oh, well, wait. No, she lives in Austin. So I can just meet up with her and just get yeah, her a SCOBY? Yeah, at some point, she, she would like a SCOBY. Okay. Yeah, so I, you can... Uh, I have I a lot to spare. I say that in my hotel right now, I've got three, and one of them I use, so I could totally give her a SCOBY. Um, that'd be Your great. Hotel. What does that mean? You keep saying that. A Scobie like Hotel. We know what that means. Scobie uh, Hotel, where he keeps them all living. It, it's in, where they like live. Like a Roach Motel. It's Scobie like a Roach Motel. motel. And, I, and I feed them sweet tea every. Like, is, that, is that a normal. Do other Scobie people say that, or is that just you? No. It, it, I got the lingo from Reddit. Okay. I'm a member. <laughs> I'm a member of for, R forward slash kombucha. So, okay. And I'm in Austin. Do you not know kombucha? We're in Austin. Uh, we, oh my god yeah I, oh give me the kombucha um kombucha is great i don't care if i'm viewed as a snob hipster dork uh it is it is great but cold brew coffee we haven't brewed or we haven't had on tap there since damn near right after you started james it was a, yeah. a few months we should do that because i remember whatever y'all made i forget if it was one of those um oh what's the name of that company that uh Farmers Brothers, wasn't Farmers it? Brothers. If it, I don't remember if it was one of their starter packs or if y'all just made it, but the nitrogenated cold brew y'all had on tap there for a while was really good, and and I was really impressed with that how that V3N worked with it. That V3N was it, it just pumped it out. I mean, it, it, Todd was able y'all were able to pour it like a beer almost, like putting mm. some head on it, watching the nitrogen go through. Uh, that is, you're right. I totally forgot about cold brew coffee. That is another one I'd recommend people make if they're trying to get if you already you know getting a V3N is very affordable if you don't already yeah. have one. It's a versatile faucet because you can use it as a normal faucet if you're not pushing nitrogen through it. And uh, having a tap of cold brew coffee if you don't have a stout beer it is still a wonderful thing, especially if you're trying to convince your wife to have a kegerator in the house. That, that's the best compromise. Or having a faucet for water, flavored sparkling water. Or sure. can I put sparkling wine on a tap? Is that is that coach? Sure. Yes. Yep. See? Absolutely. A lot of flexibility. We need to the last person at HQ to make wine was Zach. And we always love to give Zach a hard time, but I'll tell him right now, if he's ever, if he listens to this episode, that wine was not bad. It was actually very enjoyable. We had it with dinner one night at Todd's house a month ago, maybe like right when I first started coming back up. And I don't know, Todd, have you gone through all those bottles he gave you or is there still a bunch left? Uh, We've got a few left. You know, one thing I would say, I can definitely tell the difference between the ones he put in clear bottles and the ones he put in dark bottles. So they, they, the ones in clear bottles started to change the taste, uh, fairly quickly. And maybe they got left in a sunny area of the counter at some point, but, uh, I can definitely tell, I would not put my wine in clear bottles. That is a good point. And I, I, I 
have always understood that to be the case with fermented beverages. Like I don't put yeah. kombucha, uh, I put it in a dark space when it's fermenting. I keep it away from sunlight. I think the sun um, ruins the fermentation process. or it, it, uh, it, That's what gives the skunky taste on beers like Corona left out in the yard. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> the sun. Do you have yeah. like a UV free light for your for your hotel rooms and your Scooby? My, yes, my Scooby Snacks hotel room. Yeah, you're the one who you, I was going to call you out on your Freudian slip when you said I want to brew mead. You first said, "Yeah, I want to make." Mead. <laughs> you you heard it. me laughing. You heard it, James. He goes, "I want to make weed mead." Uh, <laughs> Todd Byrne. Did I really say that? You did. Yeah. <laughs> Todd Byrne Farms. Weed I and mead. I was laughing and I was trying to keep it in. Weed and mead. Todd Burns weed Farms. And mead. What a that too is illegal. So obviously, <laughs> we're gonna end it there, it. guys. Thank you so much for taking the time to do the show with me today. I appreciate it, and I look forward to seeing y'all on Monday. All right, and and that will do it for this episode of the Homebrew Happy Hour. If you have a question you'd like us to discuss on a future episode, you can go to homebrewhappyhour.com and click on the submit a question link at the top of the page, or now you can call or text them in by using 325-305-6107. Thank you to our show sponsor, Imperial Yeast, for supporting us and the homebrewing community. Join any top tier of our Patreon community, and you'll get free premium liquid Imperial Yeast shipped out to you with your Patreon recipe kit. Get more information at patreon.com forward slash homebrew happy hour. On behalf of Todd Burns, James Carlson, and the Pearl Media Network. I'm Joshua Steubing. Thank you for listening.